Hello everyone and welcome to another War Leader PvMP video. Today I'm going to be showing you more fights from Update 10 of the Riders of Rohan. And I'm just going to be talking through some of the stuff about how the, the Freep classes have shaken out, some of the balanced things that are going on. And at the very end there's also going to be a short little clip from the St. Patrick's Day raid because it's the only fight I actually recorded from that entire evening, and it needs to be shown somewhere, because it's worth seeing. And I'll talk a little bit about the raid dynamics when that comes up as well. Unfortunately, not a whole lot of focus on raiding or anything, and you know, other than that, it's just a couple 1v1s. But still, plenty that I'll have to say, so let's go ahead and dive right into the entire thing. So first up is Dunagon. Uh, Dunagon was, I believe, my second or third 1v1 of the entire update 10 experience and th this fight is going to drag on for a long long time now at the time I was really really frustrated and disappointed because throughout this entire fight what you're gonna see is that Dunagon I take him down a little bit he's constantly doing plenty of damage to me I'm doing lots and lots of healing he can't he never runs out of power I never run out of power either and he's con constantly, consistently able to heal himself back up using nothing more than some health potions and the uh, Muster Courage, which this is when I found out that is actually a heal over time, which I have my own captain and I didn't even know that. I thought it was just a, a single heal, so and I learn stuff all the time. Well, anyway, uh, the one thing I do want to mention is that at the time, I did not notice that he had the outnumbered buff, which he has when uh, this fight starts. It's vanished now, but it will pop back up periodically. And the outnumbered buff, honestly, makes just a huge, tremendous difference in the this particular iteration of the Etmores. Where the, the difference between having the outnumbered buff and not having it can literally be that the Freep is able to outheal your damage versus they die. And that's seriously how it goes. Now uh, one thing Dunagon's done here is he's actually switched uh, He switched over to the telling mark rather than revealing for a little bit and was trying to put more damage on. It didn't work out for him so well. Uh, the war leaders just built a bit too much like a brick <laughs> and a tank to, for that to be terribly effective. Uh, the other thing is that he does have food right now. Now the food is getting ready to expire so soon that buff will be gone. But uh, still that's where he's at. Uh, and of course the Freeps have both relics right now so he does have an extra 2% mitigation from that which I am not able to enjoy. Now the very first fight that I had in update 10 was against Gould who is I believe at rank 12 or 13 now as a hunter and I suspect that something similar may have happened with that fight where the outnumber buff was in play and I didn't notice it at the time. The thing that stood out most about that fight was that it was with four red outposts and I took him down all the way to just under 2000 morale and then at 2000 morale it just kinda stopped and I would take a little bit off and he would heal it right back up and this went on for almost two minutes of me not able to take away that last 2,000 morale with him out healing my damage at the very bottom of his morale pool for you know, a good solid two minutes before he finally managed to kill me. Because with the hunter, the longer the fight goes on, the more likely you are to die because they just do so much damage output. And I was really, really disturbed by that entire turn of events, the fact that he was able to out heal my damage at all. I mean, he's a hunter. It's, yeah, sure. Um, th there was outposts and stuff involved, but the thing was, all the outposts were on my side. All of them. The only thing that could have possibly been in his favor was the outnumbered buff, which I'm not sure if it was there. I never recorded that fight. I didn't have the software running. But I lost it with four red outposts because he was out healing me as a hunter. Now, obviously, the one thing that he definitely has is he's got the wonderful little rings that come from the new instant set where if you have the right kind you can get a heal proc off of taking damage. Now that heal proc is very very deadly against a war leader because war leaders just don't hit 
particularly hard. They rely entirely on crits. And I had my build already set up, but even with that, it just wasn't effective. It didn't manage to to do what I needed to do to finish him off. I got him down pretty far, but I couldn't finish the job. And I think that's where a lot of the creep classes are finding that they have a lot of trouble, is they, they can do some damage. They can do some significant damage for a while. Like right there, I just had a, a nice string of shield bash crits, and I took off... Uh, only about 2,000 morale, really. So, so, you can put down some damage, but it's just not significant enough. And then they're, the freak classes are able to just heal it up. I mean, sure, I'm taking off 500s when I'm critting, but you know they take off 500s when they crit with an auto attack. <clears throat> and then they, they heal for over 1,000. They've got heal over times and stuff coming to play. It's just a very, very difficult fight and match up to deal with to go up against. And if the Freep class has any healing available to it already, and if they're able to get access to the right rings, they use various rings, you're not going to be able to actually do what the damage that you need to do to take them out. And it's just the way it goes. One versus one matchup is just a really bad proposition if they've got audacity, if they know what they're doing, and if they've got the right gear. Which, to have matchups be entirely gear dependent, where it's a couple specific pieces of gear like that, because they give such an incredible bonus, where they give you the ability to have a heal over time applied to yourself whenever you're taking damage, which of course you're taking damage in a 1 versus 1, is just frustrating for the monster players. Now, don't think that everything's all like this. The next two fights I'm going to show are going to show a little bit different side of the Etenmores, but this is what it looks like when you're looking at the top tier players uh, for the Freeps. I mean, Dunagon is one of the top captains on this particular server. I don't know if he's necessarily the top. There's, uh, there's a couple that are really good and stand out, but he's definitely among them. And, as you can see, properly geared, well played, the captain just isn't going to be able to be beat. Not by a war leader, at least. <laughs> not, not unless they may make a mistake, which, you know, you'll know it's always going to be just a, a bad time in the Etmores when you rely entirely on the other guy to make a mistake in order to have a chance of winning. Now, while I can't beat him with him making a mistake, Fortunately, the same is true from my position, where he cannot beat me unless I make a mistake. I mean, right now, he's taking me down below half morale, but I'm going to start going into a bit more active healing, and then I'm going to undo everything that he's done already. I mean, look, I've, I've already gone from being at half morale, I'm almost up to 20k, I just need another 3,000, 4,000-ish, which there, I've got another crit, so... Now I'm at 18, and it's just going right back up. Now I don't go up nearly as quickly, plus I mean I was down at half morale. But I can do the exact same thing, and I don't even need to leave Brawler's stance. And there I'm checking out how much Muster Courage is actually healing. And uh, pretty soon here we're just going to call it quits. So while you look at it and you think, oh, th things are really tough because we can't kill them, keep in mind that if you're playing yourself well, they're not going to have an easy time of killing you either. And now we're, we're getting to look at some other stuff that goes on. Now, here I get jumped by a guardian, and uh, this is actually the first day after I come back from having not played for a little bit over a week uh, between real life and playing some other games and stuff. I just kind of stayed out of it for a, a bit. And this is also one of the, the few guardian fights I've managed to have inside of Rohan. And really, it's just so much fun to fight a guardian as a war leader. Uh, he's actually, it looks like he's doing uh, some gear swapping on hotkeys because he just completely switched what he's wearing, uh, which is something that you see Freebs doing from time to time, is that as they can get lower and lower morale, they will swap gear so that their their morale pool tightens up so uh, Reavers can't necessarily use Dev Strike, uh, Black Arrows can't manage to pull off the Revenge. And it increases their damage. They go from having more morale and mitigation-focused gear to having more and more of their primary damage stat. And 
uh, just more damage bonuses and stuff, and they'll just keep doing this, so that as you take them further and further down, they'll start hitting harder and harder. Which is just a reality of having the ability to hot swap gear with a macro and instantly change all of your gear at once. It's just how it goes. And some people will use it, and some people won't. And that's also just how things are going to go. Unfortunately for him, it's not going to work out at all. And uh, I, he went ahead and hit Pledge, but I know that he's in Overpower, so... No, I, I'm actually reacting completely wrong. He's in Overpower. Pledge is just an offensive boost in Overpower. I should be attacking just even harder because it's not giving him any defensive boost and just killing him especially because I've got him down on the ropes right now and you know my health is at 9000 but I haven't used a single major cooldown he's already blowing multiple cooldowns of his own and if I just get a couple more crits right here he will be finished off which I think he just reset everything with a uh, heart uh, well with, with deep breath and uh, he just hit his fortitude again no he did not so I guess that was just a morale potion that he managed to hit right there. But uh, now he's even lower, so last 1,000 plus a little bit more morale. 48 morale right there, and dead. Okay, and then a little bit later I run into Erlane, this is the same evening, who one of the more recent Runekeeper fights I've actually managed to have, which Erlane, uh, I expect, you know, running around solo and uh, I expect to be a pretty hard challenge actually. I don't think this is going to be an easy fight by any means. The other thing is that Erlane does have uh, some food and other buffs, but my advantage is that I am actually running around with all of these mitigation wonderful little boost defensive pots because I have uh, stacks of a hundred of each kind and I decided to go ahead and use them and honestly using these uh, buffs now is definitely the time to use them because against certain classes and matchups you need to have some kind of an edge to level the playing field or give you an advantage over the uh, opponent. It's just the way that things are right now. And you can see how hard this runekeeper is hitting me right now and uh, she's done plenty of self-healing herself so I've gone into my defensive turtle mode and what I'm waiting for right now is I want to just take pot shots at her with my shouts heal up my morale. I want to get myself back up there. I'm kind of waiting for get a grip to come off cooldown. I'm not going to be too worried if it's not off cooldown when I get ready for my attack, but I want to just take some pot shots, lower her morale a little bit, and wait for her to step too close. And as soon as she's too close to me and makes an, an error where I'm able to close the gap on her, then I'm going to go and just attack all in. And right now I've got the point defense down. I'm in defensive aura. When I get ready to attack, you're going to see because I'm going to swap auras and then I'm going to switch to the command post and then I will hit Brawler Stance and then it will be on. So Erlane is now down to 8,000 morale and you know, she's decided to focus entirely on doing damage to me, which is not a bad idea, honestly. This is actually a, a good strategy to employ. The only thing is it doesn't work because a Runekeeper by itself is not going to out heal well, out damage the amount that you can heal if you're fully turtled up. I mean, they can close in and they can use crowd control and abilities and stuff to try to keep you slowed down. If you have your big cooldowns ready to go, if they crit well, stuff like that, then you'll be able to survive if you don't get good crits. Uh, if they get really good crits while you're stuck in crowd control and stuff, then you're going to have a tough time getting out of it. That is one place where having a brand is extra helpful because it does give you one extra crowd control removal for when the situation does get a bit more dire. You can remove that last mez stun daze and get off that power of fear heal as long as you remember to actually, you know, still use some shouts. All right, looks like I am getting ready to go for it. I'm putting some damage down. Erlane's now down at 7,000 morale. And it looks like I'm going to go for one more heal right now. Guess I'm going to take a couple more pot shots. There we go. 6,000 morale. Another big crit. 5,000. This is the time to go for it. There we go. Brother's Stance. R of Command. And there. 
I didn't drop the point. There we go. Command post down, and this is going to be it. Both banners for debuffs are down now, and our lane did get some healing off, but it is rapidly evaporating under the War Leader's assault. Because when you do manage to close the gap, and I did get a, another crit there for a nice little slow, well then, Runekeepers in melee range just take a tremendous amount of damage. Now, a well-built one, they can compensate a little bit. Like, if this was Radar, this would probably be a very different story. But this is going to be a problem for poor Aerolane. Alright, I do have both of my big cooldowns ready, so uh, there I just went ahead and popped Quitters, so I do have some extra power. Because the War Leader, with the way that I spend power, especially if you continually spam skills, you will find that you are able to put a dent into your power pool. But as long as you've got some potions, as long as you use Quitters, never win, you're not going to ever actually run out of power. And Era Lane is just about finished off. You should get her with the Shield Bash. Uh, not quite. And still just barely hanging on there with uh, heals from who knows where. But that crit finishes her off. Alright, and now this is that one last fight from the St. Patrick's Day raid. This is the last fight of the entire evening, actually, before Start I end up calling it. And <sighs> this pretty much shows where the raid tactics are. Um, hunters right now are able to do more damage than a creep healer can heal. They're the only class for each side that has this capability where a single DPS class of X type can do more damage than any one single healer. The thing is, hunters are still squishy. So basically, the entire the fight Adrian revolves Oki around dropping hunters. Still up. Let's try to get some fire on. Now the other thing about this is that, you know, a lot of people have talked about how the rallying cry heals and lots and lots of captains and stuff make a big difference. Yeah, they make a big difference when you can get them off. The thing that you don't hear people talk about, they don't think about, is what kind of difference it makes when you've got Reavers and they're able to get off Glory and Victory early. Pretty much the Etmores has gotten to a point where it is a race for first blood. The first team to get some kills, to get those defeat response heals and buffs going, they're going to be able to build a ton of momentum off of a single kill and just keep going with that. So really the, what you have to focus on, no matter what side you're on, is you need to pick out the targets that are easy to kill that are high threats as well. So hunters are top of the list for us. Uh, squishy captains, squishy whatevers. You need to get targets focused where they're actually going to be doing kills, and as long as you keep on killing stuff and keep the defeat responses rolling, get your momentum going, keep the other team from getting their own momentum going, you're going to win fights, and that's exactly what happens here. The Freeps are mopped up with relative ease. I believe we took two casualties in that entire fight. So, you know, the Etmores, there are some balance issues going on, but... The thing is that you can't just look at the very top tier players and all that stuff and say, oh, because this guy's got the best gear and all that stuff, that everything is horribly terrible and skewed. There is still plenty of room out there for creeps to find their own victories and make things happen. And against those top tier players, you just have to understand that you can't hold back anything. You need to go in with every buff available and bring your A game to the fight. Because right now, if you drink anything less, then basically you have given them the fight, and it is their fight to lose. Unless they make a major mistake, they will beat you, or it will be a stalemate. Depending on the class, and you know, various classes do match up better and worse against each other. But that's pretty much where we stand. And of course, with Update 11 out now, they have a new shinies for the Freeps, we can only expect them to be getting even stronger. Well, no need to really be gloomy about it. There's still plenty of killing and winning going on by the creeps. Anyway, I will see you guys around. In the meantime, good luck and have fun out there. Ugmog is out.